This video will discuss unitary transformations and basis set transformations using matrices. So let's start off by defining two basis sets. We have basis set I, or IJ, where these are orthonormal basis vectors. So their overlap with themselves is one. If, they, if I and J are the same, it's zero if they're different. Ortho, they're orthonormal there. And also they are complete. So the resolution of the identity operator, we mentioned two videos ago, the sum from I equals one to N of, bra, of ket vector I times bra vector I is equal to one. So this is a statement that it is complete in, in N dimensions. You can represent any vector in terms of all the basis vectors I in this N dimensional set. Similarly, we have a basis Basis set two, which is the same thing, represented by alpha and beta. It too is orthonormal. It too is complete. But we want to know the relationship between basis set one and basis set two, and how we can transform uh, various things from one basis set to another. Okay, let's start off by defining the ket vector alpha, which is equal to the which is equal to the one operator alpha so it's equal to one times itself so we can substitute one with this resolution of the identity here so we have a sum from i equals one to n of ket vector i times the overlap of basis vector i and basis vector alpha so this is equal to the sum from i equals one to n of the coefficient u i alpha times the ket vector alpha so how we go from the basis set alpha to basis set i is determined by these elements ui alpha which are the overlap of basis vector i and basis vector alpha so these u together um, this has to be true for all n alphas this has to be true for all n i's so this gives us an n by n matrix which form these elements and this is a unitary transformation matrix. So we haven't proved that it's unitary yet, but this is what we'll call our transformation matrix. The individual elements of this, as I said, are equal to the overlap of basis vectors i and alpha. So bra vector i, ket vector alpha. <clears throat> Similarly, if we do the reverse operation, we start with basis vector i, we apply the one operator to it, so just multiplying it times it's times one is equal to this resolution of the identity sum from alpha equals one to n ket vector alpha overlap of alpha and i which is equal to the sum from alpha equals one to n of u i alpha star so notice that i have if you flip the two indices of of a bra and a ket you get the complex conjugate of those two and also <clears throat> note that the note the indices here for the complex conjugate. So what I can do there is define the adjoint and flip the indices of these two, because the adjoint is flipping the indices and taking the complex conjugate. So I can do I can do this here and get the adjoint acting on the basis vector alpha. Okay, and also since we have noticed that. Um, the, basis vector, the basis vectors i and j are ortho orthonormal, so their overlap is the Kronecker delta. It's 1 if i equals j. It's 0 if they're not. Normalized, 1, orthogonal, 0, which is equal to the sum. We can stick a 1 in the middle there, right there, from sum of alpha equals 1 to n of, of i alpha alpha j. <clears throat> which is equal to the sum from alpha equals one to n of ui alpha u dagger alpha j, meaning that the elements of u u dagger are equal to the Kronecker delta. So this is a long-winded way of saying that the matrix representation of this proves that we have a unitary matrix here for our transformation matrix, because the, the matrix times its adjoint equals the identity, and therefore the adjoint times the matrix equals the identity as well. So this this unitary matrix, this transformation matrix, which gives us from basis set I to basis set alpha and vice versa is unitary. <clears throat> okay, so let's take some specific operator acting on I, 
We can add in a resolution to the identity there, sum over j, ket j, bra j, operator o, ket i. So that's equals sum over j of this is the j i element of that operator represented in this basis set, so o j i times ket j, as defined in the previous video. <clears throat> if we do the same thing on alpha, we can stick in a resolution of the identity before after uh, or before O alpha gets sum over beta, ket beta, bra beta, operator O, ket alpha. And that is a sum <clears throat> over beta of some other matrix, uh, beta alpha. So these elements are O represented in terms of alpha and beta. So from that we gather that O is the representation of the operator O in the basis I, and omega is the representation of the operator O in basis alpha. So we have a matrix which represents this operator in this basis set and a matrix which represents it in the other basis set. So each basis set will have its own representation of any given operator that we give it. Okay. <clears throat> So let's do a little bit more uh, confusing linear algebra. Let's say we have omega alpha beta, which equals this Dirac matrix element. So that is going to be also equal to, we can stick identities in wherever we want. We're gonna stick in two resolutions of the identity, one for i and one for j, sum over both of them. So this looks like one matrix element times another times another sum over two of them. So this can be equivalently written as a sum over i and j of u dagger alpha i, o i j, and u j beta. And if you look carefully at all the definitions that are over here. So this is equal to the definition of a matrix matrix multiplication for three matrices. So this shows us that omega equals u dagger o u. And, th and equivalently, we can show that O equals U omega U dagger, the adjoint. So this particular operation here is called a unitary transformation. What we've done is we've taken the operator O represented in one basis set, and we have transformed it to O represented in another basis set. So we started off with the representation in basis set I, we did a unitary transformation, and now we have it in basis set alpha. Similarly, if we want to get back from alpha to i, we take, we take the representation in basis alpha, and we do the reverse unitary transformation. Notice that the dagger has moved from here to here now. And for unitary transformations, u dagger equals u minus one. So our representation back into basis i is a unitary transformation from basis alpha. So unitary matrices are used for transformations from one basis set to another. We can transform our operators, we can transform our vectors, we can transform really any function that we like through these unitary transformations. It's just a matter of finding what are the overlap of the given basis vectors which represent each individual basis set, and then we can make a unitary transformation of any given matrix from that basis set to the other one.